there. Today we're going to talk about bowed symbols. And here I have a couple of symbols, and, nor and the normal way to play symbols is with some kind of a beater, either a mallet or a stick, or a non-beater like a set of brushes. But today we're going to talk about using a bow. This is an avant-garde technique. You can use any kind of a bow, but the best bows to use are uh, a bass bow because they have um, wider hairs and more tension. The more tension you have on the bow, uh, the more accurate you can be with the, the harmonics. But any bow will do. This is a violin bow, and if you draw it at a right angle to the edge of the cymbal, you get sound that you may recognize from suspense, horror, and sci-fi movies. This is a cello bow. It allows me a little more pressure and variation of what I can do with it. So to recap, you want to bow the cymbal at a 90 degree angle to the edge. To the edge of the cymbal. And every cymbal will be different and even different parts of the symbols will be different. And you can get different sounds um, by not only how you bow it, but what you do with the other hand. Uh, if you mute certain... It, okay, I'll grab the cello bow. And if you mute certain areas, you get different sounds than if you just played straight. This is a, a crash cymbal, fairly thick. This is a, a jazz ride, kind of thin for a ride. And I also have a little splash symbol here. You can get a really low kind of harmonic, I guess. And you can do tremolos. Now the bow has to be fairly taut, but you don't need to bow with a lot of pressure. Depending on how much pressure will affect the sound. And you can get a very soft whisper.
To notate the use of a bow on the score, you simply have to put the words with bow, or you can use the modern pictogram of a bow, uh, in front of the passage to be played. Or sometimes you see both. And here are a couple of examples of bowed symbols from different pieces. And now, a short improvisation.